Even if you have faith, do you find today's news headlines troubling? This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. And welcome to the weekend edition of Truth to Ponder. And I am your host, Bob Bierman. Well, if you listen to yesterday's broadcast, now look, I know I know many of you only hear this program on your radio station on the weekend. And I wish we had airtime on many more radio stations, you know, at least five days a week. But at the moment, the way things stand, we we are just on a handful of stations, mostly international shortwave. And of course, the program can be heard at your convenience if you have internet access online. But I am praying for more options on radio. Well, yesterday, uh, if you if you listen, you know that I was pretty well fed up with politics as we know it. And, and for the weekend only listeners, just a fast recap and, and where the direction of this program is going today. This is a message of hope and a message about being very realistic about everything going on around us. If you listened yesterday, you may I made it clear that we're not going to fix anything in the United States in November of any consequence. It's our proverbial, we're getting one step back. Though the world, the left, moved two steps forward. We're still heading in a wrong, consistent direction. It's not going to change. I pointed out how many fake conservatives run around at election time. Yeah, let's do this, let's do that. And then they never do it. This year in November will mark 50 years of my being able to and going to the polls to vote. For 50 years, I've been trying to do my part to fix America and all of its ills. You know, I kept voting for all of those people that said, we're going to get rid of this national debt that's destroying families and our economy. Well, we went from... I don't know how many billions to now how many trillions of dollars in debt in 50 years. Half the time, people in office were the ones that were going to fix it. They never did. And I don't think they ever intended to. We really need to look at the world from a different perspective. We need to look at our lives, what we do, our nation, our obligations from a totally different perspective. And that's what I want to get into and mostly today on today's program. There is really some hope in these very difficult times. What is happening in Ukraine in that nation is despicable, and I made that very clear. But it's also, besides being despicable, was very predictable. There are forces that have been poking that bear for for ages, wanting to pick a fight. It doesn't excuse what Vladimir Putin has done, but that story that is missing for most people behind everything is the one that's not being told. There's a lot going on that we don't hear about. I spend a little time every day looking across social media to get a feel of what people whether they're conservative, whether they're leftist, whether they're just in the middle or just think they're, they're you know, honest liberals. I just try to get a feel of what people think. And it's amazing how we turned away from COVID-19. We've turned away from so many other ills in America. And the great focus now is in Eastern Europe. Now, we do need to pay attention to Eastern Europe. I mean, seriously, we really do. We've also learned one thing in all of this, that there are certain stories that our U.S. government would rather you don't know about because they are embarrassing stories that go back several years. And they now have allied with them the tech tyrants like the Googles and the fascist books. That I call them. That's what I call Facebook. 
and you know the little bird Twitter and Instagram. They they've all decided they're going to look. Even Duck Duck Go, which was supposed to be you know the open internet, find information from all sources. Even they've now you know drank the Kool Aid to join the censorship club and become state run media. It's getting hard to find the truth. Believe me, it is getting hard to find the truth. We we learned that during COVID. Things that were true are being suppressed. Things that were, were false information two years ago and a year ago, gradually you can't hide it forever. They're coming out. Thankfully, for those that are have been pulling this stunt, now they have Ukraine to focus attention away. And for the Biden administration, as I said yesterday, their dismal failure on energy and economics and pretty much everything they touch, they now can blame on Putin and not take any responsibility. And of course, Republicans in the United States, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. I've got one story that I want to lead into just to show you how things, I believe, are going to be done in such a way to deceive you. Trust me on this one. I see this one coming down the path real fast. There's no doubt Republicans will probably win uh, a number of seats in the House and probably will take it, and they might even gain in the Senate. Of course, six, seven months is, is an eternity in politics, so who knows what, what could happen in this period of time. And considering the short attention span of most voters, they might be easily persuade, persuaded to, you know, to stay, stay the course with Biden. I doubt it, but I see that, I see that happening. As, as I, I worry about that. If you notice something, you, you may have not paid attention to this. And, and I just want to give you an idea how, how what I call the propaganda system works. There's no doubt in my mind. I mean, we are no, we are no longer the republic that in, the, in, this, in the United States that we claim to be. The same is true in Canada. You're no longer the democracy you were founded to be by your own constitution. The same is true in the United Kingdom, Australia. You have been giving away your rights one little piece at a time for, for, for safety, peace, and, and you know free health care in some parts of the world. In other words, you've given up something to get something, and it's been done so gradually that most people never notice because it took them decades to get there. But I look back now at what I could say and do 50 years ago and the dangers of saying and doing the same things today. I mean, look at Canada. If you supported the truckers or try to give them any, you know, any money, <laughs> your bank account gets frozen. In other words, by the and, and everybody says, well, you know, someday the digital currency is coming. No, the digital currency is pretty much almost already here. Don't deceive yourself thinking digital currency is is somewhere way down the road when the Antichrist appears. It's already here. They just have a few last steps to make it global and absolute. I mean, let's put it this way. If you are on any kind of a government pension, Social Security, what have you, how many people still have a check mailed to their house? Not many. Very, very few. How many people get their income tax refund, if they're getting one, in the form of a check? Not many. The government loves direct deposit to your account. I can remember 30 years ago writing checks to pay the water bill the electric bill, the gas bill, even groceries, wrote a physical check, never realizing it was the beginning of a cashless system. Then with the online opportunities and credit cards, you know, we don't need to touch money anymore. And so how many people get their gas using a debit card or a credit card today? A lot. How many people really use cash for most of their purchases? Very few. 
if your bank decided you might have committed fraud and froze your account, how would you pay your bills? Or if a government agency seized your account, how would you get money to pay anything? We have already gradually become dependent on a beast-like system. Oh, cash is still there, but people don't spend large amounts of it. If you have large amounts of it, if you make a large cash deposit, you're immediately suspect as a possible terrorist or criminal or worse, a seditionist. And the bank may freeze that money. If you try to travel with a large amount of cash, you're assumed to be doing something wrong. And that cash is taken away, and you have to fight to get it back. We're already moving in that direction. And the younger generation, is that's all they've ever known. They're not like when I came along 50 years ago, where 90% of whatever I bought or more, when I was in college or I was you know in, in electronic school and I was paying my little cheap rent every month, I used to take my paycheck and cash it for cash. I didn't use checks or credit cards 50 years ago. But gradually, we've all been put into the comfort of the system. And little by little, we're giving up cash. And so it's not going to be a big deal for most when we go to a cashless society. And then you have the World Economic Forum wanting to tie it to a worldwide digital ID, your new digital passport to allow you to travel across borders because we'll know everything about you and how you spend your money. We'll know if you gave money to church because there's going to be no money left to give in cash if they have their way. We're on our way there, and most people are already there and don't even realize it. Now, let's go to the political realm for just a moment. And I want to share this, and then we're going to get into some other stuff that I really think you need to hear. Have you noticed who's been more quoted in recent months? And and there's always a reason when the media picks up on obscure people from another time. And in this case, I'm not talking Hillary Clinton. In this case, I'm talking Mitt Romney. I mentioned him yesterday. The guy's a... The guy's a chameleon. He's a, you know, he convinced everybody in 2012 he was a true, you know, he was he was a true conservative, vote for me. I'm Reagan-esque, I'm this, I'm that. He wasn't. He isn't, never will be. Let's, let's think about this. And, and some people have posed this, and it really does make some sense to me. I think the people that, have manipulated and supported and steered Mitt Romney to get him into the United States Senate, no less. And, of course, they did that by having him exit his home state, moved him to Utah long enough to run for Senate. He's nothing but an establishment Washington type and always wanted to be. He fits in. He fits into, well, shall we say, the elite World Economic Forum class. He's a never-Trumper, and he's a, he's a war hawk, always has been. And, and some, people, some people really believe, and I, at first when I, re, when, I, when I came across some of these thoughts, I, I wasn't sure if I would buy into it. Because in the Republican Party, there is a big division. You have the establishment uh, rhino group. They're, they're Republicans in name only. They claim to be conservatives when they need your vote but they'll lie through their teeth to get that vote. And then they turn around and stab you in the back and do their own thing anyway. But every every two years in the House, every six years in the Senate, they put on a great public relations campaign to convince you there's something they're not. And people fall for it. Don't be surprised. See, the GOP right now, the grand old party, the Republicans, they're divided. You got the never Trumpers. You have the those that were the part of the Lincoln Project that was tied with what is it, child porn and 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 just terrible stuff. Some of their leaders. 
These are reprobates that run these never Trumper type organizations. I'm not saying Trump's a sta- saint. Believe me, I'm not. I'm just saying that Trump challenged the system and they hate Trump for it. It doesn't matter who it was. It could be St. Paul and they would go after him. But see, you've got Romney of late talking about the insurrection last year in 2021. The dangerous Trumpers. They're, they're evil. And, and we, we all know that, that, that dear Joe Biden, who I, who I served with for a while, and, and I know him from years gone by, and, and I think he's just a great individual. He means well. His health is failing and his mind is giving out, and, and Kamala Harris would be an abject disaster. Besides, corrupt, you know, they'll find some really evil things about Kamala Harris. They don't want her either. She's, if, if they run her as the candidate in 2024, they're dead in the water. They're trying to salvage themselves this year by forgetting the coronavirus ever existed. They're trying to have you look at Ukraine and, and blame the rising energy prices and food prices. Oh, it's all Putin's fault. Well, it was happening long before Putin even considered going into Ukraine. It just was made worse by our, by our government's own stupidity of not being prepared and putting ourselves at the mercy of a world mar- you know, market. I can remember back in the 1970s. Remember Spiro Agnew? He was the vice president under Nixon. And they decided they did not want him as president if Nixon should have to go because of Watergate. And it didn't take long to find dirt on him that was picked up by the Washington Post and everybody else, and he resigned. And thus, they were able to to choose the vice presidential candidate, which was Jerry Ford, and then Nixon stepped down, and they continued on with their club. That's how it worked. Here's what I believe is going to happen. Mitt Romney is talking about all these terrible conservative redneck Republicans and their pickup trucks and and everything else and uh, their God and their guns and, and, and insurrectionists and, and they can't be trusted and we, we need to do something about it. And and maybe 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 the Republican Party is not the party I should be in. Maybe I can find a home in the Democrat Party. I really believe that Mitt Romney may end up a Democrat. Won't be the first time. Look, George W. Bush voted for Joe Biden. A lot of so-called Republicans voted for Joe Biden in 2020 because they're not truly conservatives. They are just swamp creature reprobates in it for their own stuff, almost satanic in nature. And I believe that Romney, they're giving him a lot of, you see him him all over now. All of a sudden, he's the voice of wisdom for Republicans and Democrats. He can chart that path between the two parties and unite them. Yeah. Democrats are really upset. They don't want Kamala Harris. They don't want Joe Biden. But they figure that a guy like Mitt Romney, who who suddenly decides that I could be a Democrat. Well, all the ant- the never-Trumpers will follow a good chunk of the independents, and the Democrats will rally around anybody with a D after their name. I I really believe that Mitt Romney is positioning himself for after the 2022 midterms. I, I really believe that impeachment proceedings will begin against Biden after the 2022 elections, And it could be for his mental health. It could be for the 25th Amendment. It could be for, oh, I don't know, the millions of dollars that that family made out of both Russia and Ukraine and other things. How does somebody in the United States Senate have multi-million dollar holdings in very pricey and very exclusive real estate? 
on a hundred and some odd thousand dollars a year. Only if, you know, look, it, it was uh, Harry Truman that said, show me a rich politician and I'll show you a corrupt one. And he's right. So when, when I believe, I think, I really think that he's going to make the transition from Republican to Democrat, citing there are just too many Trumpers left in the party, too many mindless conservatives left in the party that, that don't understand that January 6th was the ultimate insurrection and they're all domestic terrorists, they're all seditious, and they're all following Trump the dictator. He's going to be, he's been doing that already. And he's he's going to say that the GOP has been destroyed by this cult of Trump. And he can peel just enough Republicans away that are on the fence. He can grab enough independents and the Democrats because he will be the voice of sanity, reason, without a mental defect, talking peace, prosperity, dealing with Putin from a point of power and offering you peace and national security. I really believe the legacy media that we know, which is run by by the elites, by the World Economic Forum, by, by the big corporations that are really behind the money, and they're going to be, there's going to be a full court press, including, I think, even... Not everybody, but I would say the newscasters, not the opinion people at Fox News. Right now, you know, I look at Fox News today versus Fox News of 20 and when I first got it in 1996 with my first little inexpensive satellite dish. They've come a long way downhill. Their initial ideals have been abandoned, especially during their coverage of news. Now, they still know where the money comes from. And, of course, Tucker Carlson brings them money. Sean Hannity brings them money, though he tends at times to be, oh, how do I put it, a bit of a neocon. He's trying to, you know, keep the neocon and the conservative base glued together. And Laura Ingram. And outside of those three, in terms of commentary, I mean, I, I, they're, they're the last vestige of what they used to be, to a degree, and not even as much as they were back in the day. Fox News, Newsmax, all of them sold their soul for vaccine money. And all of a sudden, the daytime hosts are saying... We can beat COVID if we all get vaccinated with this. Exp- they, didn't, they wouldn't talk about it being an experiment. They never want to talk about the fact that the numbers aren't adding up. Right now, the Ukraine situation has got to be a blessing to Democrats because the vaccines do not stop you from getting or spreading COVID. So what's the point of a mandate for something that doesn't do what they claimed it would do? And it's like, oh, oh, look, war in Ukraine. Look over there. Forget this. Gas prices rising. It's Putin's fault. There's going to be a real psych op going on. Hailing Mitt Romney as a decent and moral man, a heroic champion who places principles before party and is going to be trying to promote the common good, saving the country from further division, fragmentation, and disunity. Mark my words. And the dark forces that were behind Romney are probably the same dark forces that are behind Biden. And they'll put together this coalition of anti-Trump Democrats, anti-Trump Republicans, and anti-Trump independents, and anti-Biden Democrats and independents to secure a victory at all cost. And, you know, when you think about it, back in, you know, back in the old days, let's go back to the days of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. He had people of both parties on his cabinet. He really did. And I can see Mitt Romney pledging the same thing. 
you know, I will listen to reasonable Republicans, reasonable Democrats, and I'll put them in positions of power. I see the day coming. And I also realize that Hillary Clinton, if she's the anointed one of the Democrats, she'll be fine. But if she's not, they'll crush her early on. If Barack Obama does not want Hillary in, she's toast. They have enough dirt on her to to stop her in her tracks forever. There are dark forces behind so much. And we don't even see at times that we are being sped toward, toward the end of this world as we know it. The headlines can be very disconcerting. And you have a lot of people looking for some time in the future when things are going to get bad. They're going to get bad. I don't understand this mentality among Christians that somehow believe, especially if they live in the United States sometime in the last 150 years, this mentality that nothing bad happens to us. Tribulation will never really come to us. Minor inconvenience, yes, major tribulation, never. Besides, when it really gets bad, we'll be out of here anyway. And and I I have searched the scriptures, and I'm going to share some thoughts on that in the next segment of the program. The church in the United States, even Bible-believing true Christians, found themselves completely unprepared two years ago. We are now at the second anniversary of 15 days to flatten the curve. That became 15 weeks and then 15 months. It could happen again. See, a lot of churches are saying, oh, it's over, man, we can get back to normal. Everything's going to be fine. Now that they know they can use a virus or a disease to shut you down and lock you out, they will do it. And they know in many places they'll get away with it. Believe me, they know it. And they know many Christians are so misinformed that they will gradually take on their ID and their cashless society, and one day the church will be unable to get the funds to pay its bills. The day's coming. And if you think you're going to escape at all, you better think again. Because I'm going to tell you what the Bible has to say about that kind of thinking. Oh, of course the Bible says fear not. Fear not. Of course, that is easier said than done from our human condition, we cannot fear not on our own. We need the power of God's Holy Spirit to make that happen. I'll explain that too in just a moment. I want to share the words of Jesus, the things we're looking at, whether we are coming to the end times or just a really bad time of turbulence and and trials and tribulations, I can't tell you. If I ever claim to have that answer, then I'm a heretic. Too many people have made too many predictions that never came true. And some of those, I'm going to use the kindest word I can find, clowns, are still publishing their books. They failed before. Why would you listen to them now? I hope you don't. Now, as we go to the break, a couple of quick updates and reminders. We are now broadcasting this program on shortwave at midnight Eastern Time, which is 9 p.m. Pacific. Now, it's important that the midnight airing on the frequency of 9455 is not so much intended for the East Coast as it is intended for Mountain and Pacific Time. We're getting some wonderful reports from that part of the world on 9455. For the first time on radio... This program can be heard in the western part of Canada, all of the western United States, you know, west of the Rockies, pretty much, even Nevada. And 
West Texas into parts of Mexico. The signal also barrels into Hawaii. And for about four, five hours a day, it is making a beautiful signal into Australia and New Zealand. And over the weeks ahead, I anticipate that signal getting much better. So we're thankful for our first airing on the West. We're still on 5950 and and 9395 from WRMI. Lately, I have not heard much from those listening on KVOH at 9975. Haven't had any uh, correspondence at all. And I'm beginning to wonder, is, is that an effective reach? Please let me know. And we're on a couple of domestic radio stations as well, and as a, as a podcast from the website. Shortwave airtime needs to be increased, maybe even some domestic airtime in the right places, if we can put it together. If you believe in the ministry, I'm the unpaid employee, and there are no other employees but me. Make a check payable to Ancient Word Radio. That's Ancient Word Radio. And the mailing address is 5753, 5753, Highway 85 North. That's 5753, Highway 85 North, number 3248. That is number 3248. And we are in Crestview, Crestview, Florida. And the zip code is 32536. As we go to this break, I want you to keep something in mind. And this is important. I know we're running just a little bit late for the break, but that's all right. What I want to do in the next segment of the program, if I do nothing else, is to open your eyes on how the church must be ready. You as a Christian must be ready. You must be ready for the second coming. You must be ready for the day that your life comes to an end. You must be ready to do the things that God has called you to do, and too many are not. We're so, we're so into this world, we forget that we're not of this world, Just we just happen to be in it. But I think too many of us are too invested in it at times. And I, I look, I'm as guilty as anybody else. We need to be ready. And I think woefully many of us are not. And that's what I want to talk about in no uncertain terms. I hope it'll give you hope and confidence and security and peace that you have never had. And that fear, as my good friend Jim Calhoun reminds you, that we replace fear with faith. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. Don't forget our website, Truth, the number two ponder.com. Truth, the number two ponder.com. Email me direct. Let me know how you're listening. Bob at Truth, the number two ponder.com. Bob at Truth, the number two ponder.com. This is Truth to Ponder. With Bob Bierman. The dimensions of the wind. Coming up. Shalom Aleichem. This is the nice Jewish boy, Jonathan Kahn, your Jewish connection, bringing you the riches of your Jewish roots in Jesus. Now get your pen out as fast as you can so you don't miss out on receiving a special free gift you're going to get and love in a moment. When I was in junior high, I took shop class and we learned about mechanical drawing. To do a mechanical drawing, you had to draw the same object from three different views to get the three different dimensions, height, width, and depth. Every object has three dimensions. Well, when you read the book of Exodus and you read the instructions for the tabernacle, they're filled with the same thing, dimensions. Uh, How many cubits high, wide, how many cubits long? The old covenant had many dimensions all the time. You see, it had dimensions because it was the covenant based upon tablets. But when the new covenant came, when the spirit came on Pentecost, which is on the same day actually that the old covenant came, there were no dimensions, no height, width, depth, no directions, nothing. Because the coming of the spirit had no dimensions because the spirit has no dimensions, no measurements. Profound thing. You see, the flesh has dimensions. The spirit does not. To have dimensions and measurements is to have limits. And when you live in the flesh, you're limited. You're you're limited by yourself. You're limited by your own understanding, your abilities or your weaknesses. Your strength is limited. Everything, your wisdom is limited. Everything. But the spirit has no measurements. The spirit has no dimensions. The spirit isn't limited. You can't measure the wind. The spirit has no limits at all. God is not limited. There's no limit to his mercy or his love or his wisdom or his strength or his power. When you live by the Spirit, there's no limitations. By the flesh, you're limited. But by the Spirit, you're unlimited. When you live by the Spirit, you become open-ended. The wind blows through you. You can do all things through Messiah. You can break out of limitations, become unlimited, enter the dimension of the Spirit. Your life will become as unlimited as the wind because the Spirit, like the wind, has no measurements. 
Want more? Ask for blowing in the wind. Now, how'd you like to move mountains? Well, you can in the power of the Lord. And you can with Sapphire's The Super Spiritual Supplement to help turn your walk into a super life with God. Plus the incredible mystery of the temple doors all free. How do you do that? How do you get this? Easy. Just remember Jesus is real Hebrew name, Yeshua, and you dial it. That's it. So just call 1-800-YESHUA-1 to receive your free gifts. You will be blessed, but call now 1-800-YESHUA-1. And I invite you to join me in the Great Commission to bring salvation back to his ancient people and reach millions of unreached peoples around the world. You want to do something unlimited? It's amazing. The farthest way you'll ever spread the gospel in your life is through shortwave radio. It touches, it spreads the entire uh, earth. It's incredible. Be part. How? Just call 1-800-YESHUA-1. Y-E-S-H-U-A-1. You can write me direct at the Nice Jewish Boy, Box 1111, Lodi, L-O-D-I, New Jersey, 07644. That's the Nice Jewish Boy, Box 1111, Lodi, L-O-D-I, New Jersey, 07644. Well, till next time, this is Jonathan Kahn saying, Be unlimited, my friend. Live by the Spirit. Shalom Alechem. Peace be to you in Messiah. Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. And welcome back to part two of our weekend edition of Truth to Ponder. I'm your host, Bob Bierman. Okay, I spent a little bit longer than I planned on in the first half talking about politics to a degree again. And my opinion that you're going to be manipulated. They're going to be, do you think, do you think the elites of this world are just going to run and hide because the Christians are going to come out and vote in 2022. If you do, you're, you're, you're deceived. This battle against the spirit of Antichrist is ongoing and never ending. And if you think for a moment that it, that we just win on this earth, you're, you're, you're not thinking straight. That's all I can tell you. You're not thinking straight. If you think we have nothing to fear because we get a get out of tribulation free card, you're wrong again. I'm going to say a couple of things. Look, I've got good friends that listen to this program. I love them dearly. And they listen regularly. And they know where I stand on specific issues and why. And, and, I, and many try to say, but see, if you take this little piece of Scripture and that little piece of Scripture and you tie it with this little understanding, you have the instant doctrine of the rapture. And I look at it and I shake my head going, you know, I don't see it that way. And I want to take, and, and there's a reason I, I don't see it that way. And I use the words of Jesus to prove my point. I want to take you into Matthew's Gospel. We're going to be looking at a number of verses there to understand the times in which we may very well be living. Similar times have occurred over these past 2,000 years. And whether we are, whether we got a year left or a 10 years or a 100 or a 1,000, I don't know. Look at how many, how many fake preachers have predicted the end. Oh, Jesus will come in 1988. Many said that, or 89, or 92, or 2012. 1800s, 1500s, the year 1000. There have been many before and many yet to come. And the second somebody tries to narrow it in, I turn my ears off because I know where they're going to head to ultimately, and everybody's going to be so wrapped up. Ooh, Jesus is coming soon. And so my work is done. Let's head to the hills. Well, if we head to the hills, it's not going to be because Jesus is right around the corner. It's going to be because we were forced out. We'll talk about that. But I want to pick up with something that Jesus says. And this is from, from Matthew 24. And and he's, he's, he's been giving this dissertation about the signs of his coming. The signs of the end of the world, or end of the world as we know it, or the end of time as we understand it. And I want to pick up at verse 36. Now listen carefully. But of that day and hour knowest no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Jesus and other 
writing says, even he does not know the day of his coming. He doesn't know. Till the father says, go, he does not know. And so I don't think that some of these people that made lots of money on books and DVDs uh, know either. I don't think they know something that Jesus doesn't know. And so, but we do understand the progression of time, and we can see it. So, picking up at verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, I want to really focus just for a moment here on Noah, the ark, the flood, all of it for a moment. For as the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Okay? Now, Noah had been, for all those years, building quite a, quite a number of years, I might add. He had been preaching this repent doctrine, And he was mocked. He was laughed at. They were celebrating their sins. They were indulging in their sins. Kind of sounds like some of the apostate churches in in the United States, Canada, England, Australia, Germany, France, whatever, all over the world. A lot of apostate churches. They are so busy celebrating their sins, their transgenderism, the things that God despises. And that's all they amplify. They don't talk much about the gospel unless it has to do with their sexuality. They don't talk much about the gospel unless it is social justice, worshiping of the earth, climate change, all that goes with it. Those churches, book of Revelation, you know, they, they, it talks about the lampstand. The lampstand represents the power of the Holy Spirit within that church. And in too many of these churches, many United Methodist churches, many Episcopal churches, many Lutheran churches, Evangelical Lutheran Church in America predominantly, and others, United Church of Christ, and others, that lampstand is long gone. It it left the building 10, 20, 30 years ago or longer. The Spirit of God no longer dwells there. It can't. He's no longer invited. He's cursed. There lies the problem. But I want you to understand this, and and especially you people, as we look at you know what is going on. As in the days were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Now, go back to verse 39 here and and listen to this carefully. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, when people talk about the rapture, they... They talk about those in Christ disappearing, you know, heading to here and then coming back. It, it doesn't make any sense. How, what does corruption have to do with incorruptible? We, we'll go into this some other day. They didn't know anything. They didn't even notice that Noah had, had gone into the ark. They'd given up on him, that crazy preacher down the street. But I think the news today would notice if if millions of Christians just vanished, cars are empty, as those that believe in the rapture would have you believe, that you'd see a pile of clothing somewhere and and cars running unmanned. I can remember back in the Jesus days of the 70s, the bumper sticker that says, in the event of the rapture, this car will be unmanned. People would really see that as an event, and it would cause an awakening, But that's not how it's going to happen. Oh, yeah, Christians will gradually be pushed out of society. Noah's being pushed out. Noah was being 
you know, ignored. Yeah, the crazy preacher over there building some ark in the desert. What a fool. What a moron. You can just hear them laughing, cursing, and continuing in their sinful indulgence. That's what they were doing. That's why the flood came. Mankind had become despicably evil and irredeemable. And an affront to an almighty and righteous and holy God. Yet Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And he went into his ark. Many Christians that are true believers, when the time comes, will be pushed out of our mainstream society and out of sight, out of mind. They're not going to be raptured. Christians are going to have to find a way to work in a parallel existence like Christians had to do in the first century and and many other times throughout history. The persecuted church, oftentimes people had to withdraw and leave and go to another place where they were not being, you know, hunted down to be to be killed to keep the gospel alive as they could. Many who God called to stand their ground ended up being consumed by lions, tortured, burned alive, crucified, beheaded, martyred for the faith. There was no rapture for them. Think about Christians in many parts of the Islamic world or even right now in Ukraine. They're dealing with tribulation right now. Where is their rapture? World War II, World War I, many other times throughout history where we're not promised this American idea that we don't have to worry because we're special is a bunch of baloney. It's theological garbage. Get it out of your mind. Verse 39 again, I'm going to read it. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Who did they take away? Who did the flood take away? Noah? No. It took away the evil ones, the non-believers. It came suddenly, that flood. The rains came and all of a sudden they were washed away. They were taken out. That's what Jesus says. They were taken all away as they knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man. Now, what does verse 40 say? Listen carefully. Jesus now goes into the dissertation. There shall be two in the field. The one shall be taken, the other left. Noah was left, but he was in the ark. Two women were grinding at the will. At the mill, one will be taken, the other left. Watch, therefore, you know not what hour your Lord doth come. Then he says, if the good man of the house had actually known what hour the thief would come, he'd be ready. So all these people that bought billboards for millions upon millions of dollars, he's coming on May the whatever in 2000, whatever. It was a bunch of baloney. It was a lie. He's coming in 1988 because This happened, and then 40 years later is a generation, so it has to be 1988, maybe 89, but 88. How many failed prophecy books are out there that people spent money on over the decades? Believe me, I bought my share back in the 70s and 80s. I even had Ken Wisson, Dr. Ken Wisson at the NASA guy, who wrote a book, The 88 Reasons That Jesus Will Return in 1988. A lot of my family really believed into that, and they were ready to sell everything and move to the hills. And I said, that's exactly what the enemy of your soul wants you to do, to be ineffective, hide away. We're not there yet. Thinking you know the day that Jesus is coming and hiding in the hills, then what are you doing for the cause of Christ? Nothing. When you are forced to the hills, when you're forced to retreat, so to speak, as Christians have had to do, over the centuries, when you are put in a position that you have no choice, that's a whole set of, set of circumstances. 
Once again, I'm going to just go right through these verses to make it clear. For as in the days were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And he knew not until the flood came, and knew not until the flood came, those people that were had mocked Noah, that had cursed God, living in their sin, celebrating their, you know, their sexuality in churches type, you know, that whole group. They made fun of the preacher that's, that, you know, that, that's giving them God's word. And they invented their own gospel is what's happened today. There's another gospel out there that is not the gospel. It's an anathema. And the world gives lip service to God and prayer and all of that just to get your vote. There's a lot of demonically filled people in politics. I am convinced of that more and more each passing day not just in Ukraine or Russia or Europe or France or England or wherever, but right here in the good old U.S. of A. A lot more than we would ever want to imagine and a lot more in government that despise the things of God. Judges, legislatures, and governors that mock the the name of Christ and his people. We're coming into that time. We don't know the day or the hour. And if you think that one morning you're going to be driving to work and just vanish out of your car and not have to deal with any of it, sounds great. But that's not what the early church ever believed or taught. Who's taken away? Who's left? I think we have it backwards according to what Jesus says here. You know, we need to be ready. We need to be faithful and wise. We need to, what's Jesus say? Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. He says that to blessed is the servant whom his Lord when he cometh shall find so doing. In other words, being diligent in what God has called you to do. If God calls you into retreat with other Christians, so be it, you shall do it. But you're not going to take it upon yourself to run away and stay away forever. Even if you do leave where you're at, if God leads you, and I really believe right now, God is preparing to move his people to other places, not all of them. But many are going to be leaving what they're doing, the work that they're doing, because the work that they're doing is not Christ honoring. And they're compromised. They're going to have to make changes. I know my wife and I have been really wrestling. My wife for years has said, maybe it's time you plant another church. And then we'd look around, and I, and I just didn't feel it. I would say, Lord, I just don't get it. It's not here. I don't have peace about this. Maybe we should do this. And the pandemic came. And, you know, you know, you know the whole story. You know, I think of the, as I mentioned yesterday, for those that heard the program, chapter 25, Jesus talks about the parable of the ten virgins, five foolish, five wise. Five were prepared to to stick it out longer. The other five were just waiting for it all to happen uh, in the time they thought it was going to happen, and they were wrong. They did, And the bridegroom came, and they missed. There's so much to be found in chapter 24 and 25 of Matthew. And maybe I need to spend more time in the weeks ahead getting you ready for the times to come to really get you to understand what it means to fear not. It's something you and I cannot do on our own. I cannot on my own power fear not. I can't do it. My human instinct and all of it, everything that goes with it, doesn't work that way. That's not how we're wired. It takes the power of God's Holy Spirit to make us overcomers over fear. It's nothing you choose to do. We put too much emphasis on the things that we do and not what God does for us. Because we won't let our... How many remember that song, Carrie Underwood sung it. I'm not going to play it, but she sung it a few years, several years ago. Jesus Take the Wheel. 
All too often in life, we try to hold on to the wheel, run it ourselves, and then, man, all of a sudden when it's out of control, then, then we go, hey, Jesus, take the wheel. Maybe he should have been driving from the beginning. That bumper sticker, God is my co-pilot, well, if, if that's the case, you're in the wrong seat. We, we've lost a lot in our especially Americanized, westernized Christianity of the thinking of, of how Christians functioned in those early days. And we really need to recover that again. God has really laid on my heart for my wife and I at this stage of our life, because we can do this, to help maybe build a place, some small place, nothing elaborate, where people can come to meet and recharge their batteries, come to meet to worship and pray. Not that we're hiding forever away from the world, but a place to come, a place of rest on your journey. I have no idea what it's going to look like. But God laid this vision on my heart many, many years ago, then it faded away, then I thought about it again. And now the ability of doing it is actually coming into focus, which I never thought I would see. But it truly is. This radio program, I believe, is going to grow. I think there'll be more radio stations, more outlets, and more possibilities. I pray for that. Would you pray for it? I would love to be on more radio stations. I'd love to have more short wave time. I'd love for more people to even know that we exist as a podcast. There are lots of podcasts. How do you rise where people find you? It's not easy. But I believe that God will open doors for those that should hear this program, will hear this program. And he'll raise other voices like mine to reach other places I can't reach and they can't reach what I can. I don't need to be a superstar. That's one of the things I don't like about some Christian radio. We have the Christian superstars, just a handful of superstar preachers in their superstar churches with their big dollars and their big campaigns and their and their popularity and following. I don't want any of that. That's the stuff the world tries to offer, and I want nothing. I want nothing to do with that. I'd rather know the people that I'm serving on a first name basis. I'd rather be in a community of believers, even though that community is spread out over the country, that I know and I can talk to, and some that from time to time we get to see. I'll talk about that next week. If you only hear this on radio on the weekends, our website, truththenumber2ponder.com, can show you the many ways to hear the program, truththenumber2ponder.com. If you can tell me what station you're listening to, that would be a huge blessing for me. What stations and frequencies are effective, which ones are not? Time to to make some decisions as we come into the month of April. And look for the opportunities that God is giving us. Pray for the new frequency, 9455. I think it's going to reach, for the first time, our voice can be heard in the West Coast. And if you can help us with the airtime, and the growing of this ministry. I have a lot of things that God has laid in my heart. I am going to talk about next week the help that I need. Maybe God is calling you. If you believe in what we're trying to do here, would you consider a small gift, a large gift, whatever God lays in your heart? Make the check payable to Ancient Word Radio. Ancient Word Radio. Mailing address, Truth to Ponder. Truth, the number two, Ponder. 5753 Highway 85 North. 5753 Highway 85 North, number 3248, number 3248 in Crestview, Crestview, Florida. Crestview, Florida zip code is 32536. And until next week, may God richly bless you. This has been Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. To find out more, visit our website, Truth, the number two, and the word ponder.com. That's truth, the number two, ponder.com. Truth to ponder, shining the light of truth in a darkening world.